The College of Psychologists, a bunch of people put in power by the government basically, is threatening to take my dad's psychology license because he's been criticizing the government. This isn't a joke. This has been torturing my family since 2018, seriously bullying my dad in a way that really caused everyone in my family a lot of stress. I think it's part of what contributed to him being quite ill in 2019, 2020. The colleges are in charge of doctors, massage therapists, dentists. They've been around since about the 60s. And it turns out, which I guess isn't that surprising, They've been infiltrated by the government and now it looks like they're being used to control particularly conservative working professionals. So this is how bad it is. He's getting investigated because of tweets he's tweeted, personal tweets, opinions, things he said on Joe Rogan. It's, it's such a scam too. They're requiring him to do media retraining that he pays $225 an hour for, for an unspecified amount of time. And then at the end of that training, they decide whether or not he's learned anything and whether he can continue being a psychologist. This isn't even a process that goes to court. It's just this regulatory board of like 12 tyrannical individuals. It's crazy that what you say online can be used to get rid of your license if people don't like you politically, which doesn't sound very democratic to me. They don't like his opinions, so they're trying to shut him down. But right now it's in a very real way. Anybody can submit a complaint about a psychologist or a doctor for that matter, anybody. It doesn't have to be a former client. So for dad, it's random people on Twitter complaining about him. Out of his audience of 20 million, he has 12 complaints. The college could throw these complaints out, but instead they're threatening him and have been for years, wasting his time, bullying him, and threatening to take his license, picking on a professor for his opinions on Twitter against the government. It's absurd. If they end up managing to take his license, which will really be hard on my dad, even Elon's responded to dad's tweet, which was really a tweet for help in all honesty, because we're not sure what to do here. Obviously he's not gonna be doing their media retraining, but this is pretty scary. This is real. This is actually happening. I loved my job and my students, undergraduates and graduates alike, were positively predisposed toward me. But that career path was not meant to be. There are many reasons, including the fact that I can now teach many more people and with less interference online. These have been imposed universally in academia. Despite the fact that university hiring committees had already done everything reasonable for all the years of my career and then some to ensure that no qualified minority candidates were ever overlooked. My students are also partly unacceptable precisely because they are my students. I am academic persona non grata because of my unacceptable philosophical positions. And this isn't just some inconvenience. These facts rendered my job morally untenable. How can I accept prospective researchers and train them in good conscience, knowing their employment prospects to be minimal? This is one of many idiot issues of appalling ideology currently demolishing the universities and downstream the general culture not least because there are simply idiot issues of appalling ideology currently demolishing the universities and downstream the general culture. Not least because there are simply not enough qualified BIPOC people in the pipeline. This has been common knowledge among any remotely truthful academic who has served on a hiring committee for the last three decades. This means we're out to produce a generation of researchers utterly unqualified for the job. And we've seen what that means already in the horrible grievance studies disciplines. That, combined with the death of objective testing, has compromised the university so badly that it can hardly be overstated. 
We're not having a fight about who has the right to speak freely. That's nothing. That's, that's, that's a peripheral problem, even though that can be serious in and of itself. We're having a fight about whether or not your claim that free speech exists is nothing but a masquerade for your willingness to dominate and use power. And so if I was taking that tack, I'd say, it's all well and good for you to speak about free speech, but look, you're white and you're middle class and you're British and you're, and you're privileged and you have this theory about free speech that your ancestors derived, but the only reason they ever derived that to begin with is so they could exercise their power. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as free speech. That's just a lie to mask a power claim. And that's a way worse cynical criticism of the notion of free speech than you can't speak 